Praise the Lord. Uh, thank Lord for this uh, wonderful day. Once again, uh, this is the Lord's day that we gather together to praise and worship our God. So it doesn't matter, you know, how many people are here, but in you know, God's presence and the Holy Spirit is in our midst. So we can feel that, we experience that spirit in our uh, in our life this morning. So thank you, uh, the worship leaders, worship worshipers. You know, had a wonderful worship. Thank you, Cedric, brother Cedric, for uh, the wonderful um, exaltation that we had. That you know, the Psalms one. Uh, that's our favorite. Everybody's favorite. You know, uh, Psalms that you know, uh, the first time we are learning. You know, the Bible verses. Yeah, blessed is the man who. Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of ungodly. If you walk in the counsel of ungodly, you know what will happen? You will stand and you will, then after that you will sit. That is uh, the progressive of sin. Sin is progressive. The first time we feel that it is okay, but uh, you know we will end up uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a big sinner. So let's walk in the counsel of godly people and the counsel of word of God and the Holy Spirit. Um, it was a wonderful psalms and wonderful thought. Uh, today I want to take a few minutes. I'm not a big pre preacher but uh, uh, the God uh, put my thoughts into my heart. You know I want to share with you this morning. So you know that you know, uh, you know the pastor, our pastor is not here. I just want to say a small story by the way you know. Um, there is a pastor in a, in a village, in a, in a uh, small town. Uh, there was a church as a pastor, and he invited um, people for a special meeting. And uh, the people came for the meeting, and the pastor was so happy, and he started to preach. And he preached and preached at the time, you know, went up, and, you know, one by one, you know, the people, you know, get up and, you know, they went home. Uh, but, but, but pastor was keep preaching. Finally, one person left over there, and he was sleeping too. Finally, pastor said the benediction and came to the brother and uh, said, Oh, brother, thank you that you know you are listening my uh, sermon and sitting here until this time. And the uh, uh, brother said, uh, Pastor, I know that it was a good uh, sermon, but I, I also was preaching because of the time went up. I'm a farmer. I have a chicken coop. You know, I'm farming the chickens. Sometimes and I have a hundreds of chickens, you know, so I take a big sacks of weeds and, you know, pour in the middle of the uh, chickens, you know, they all eat. But uh, sometimes I sell the chickens, I keep only few. So I don't put uh, the whole sack, you know, I put only two scoop or one scoop to the chicken. So the same way, I know that, you know, it's a few people over here, so I don't want to take uh, an hour to give a preach and I'm going to cut it down in a few minutes. So... Please bear with with me. That's what I, <laughs> my appeal is. You know, uh, I want to. Uh, my subject of uh, the message today is uh, the seven pillars of uh, wisdom. Uh, we can read a verse from Proverbs, chapter nine, verse one. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn seven pillars. Yeah, wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. I just want to ask you, the children, uh, uh, who wrote uh, Proverbs? Children. All right. Who? Nia? Solomon. Very good. Very good. We all know that you know, Solomon wrote this book. Solomon is a son of David who is appointed by God uh, for the king of Israel after David. After he took the charge, God asked uh, Solomon, Solomon, what do I do for you? And uh, without any doubt or without any hesitation, uh, Solomon said, Lord, I want your wisdom to lead your people. So God was so, so pleased and you know, God uh, gave the wisdom from, uh, from above and everything else what he didn't ask. So in the book of uh, First King chapter 4 
29 to 35, um, we see that uh, we can see that in uh, how uh, wise Solomon was. He was the wise of wisest. There was no other person under the heaven and the earth in the case of you know wisdom uh, like Solomon. So in the in the chapter uh, 4, 32, we read that. 3,000 proverbs and uh, 1,005 psalms he wrote. Out of that 3,000 proverbs and the psalms, uh, one third of the proverbs and psalms you know, we can see in the book of, books of uh, psalms, proverbs, ecclesiastes, and uh, uh, so, uh, song of Solomon. We can see that. Uh, these books are uh, give us a very practical knowledge and wisdom and counseling and lessons uh, we gave everything uh, it is it is it is a good book so um, so I encourage all of you to read that book uh, uh, you know you know that uh, uh, week, a week ago I just visited is a uh, Samuel here okay yeah I visited yes um, Samuel, um, I visited uh, um, Brother John uh, Shaila's house, and you know, at uh, that time, you know, there was a spring break. Uh, I talked to um, you know Samuel that you know, hey, how is uh, how was your uh, uh, spring break? What did, did you do? And he said um, uh, it was good. So uh, I read a lot of books, and I asked him that, did you read book, uh, Bible? He said, yeah. And I asked him again, you know, did you read Proverbs? Yes, I finished it. He, re he read. So I was so proud that, you know, uh, you know, in that uh, spring break, um, you know, he took that time, even though he is he, uh, a very talented uh, child and uh, he, he has uh, different talents, but he took the time to read the Bible. So it is a very good book that I read. You know that when I was small, you know, um, I read, uh, I remember that I read uh, Proverbs 31 chapters two times because, you know, when, uh, when I was rebellious to my mom or, you know, disobedient, my mom used to tell that, uh, he used to say that, you know, go read the uh, Proverbs. So I read, you know, I remember that I read two times, you know, he, now you know that how uh, naughty I was, you know, when I was small. Don't, no, don't. Children don't hear that, okay. <laughs> so, so it is a good book. Uh, it is a good book that, especially Proverbs. You know, if you if you read that, you know, we can avoid a lot of mistakes. Uh, you can escape from a lot of uh, sin and you know mistakes. So, I encourage everyone to read that. So, so we read that book and uh, corrected our life. Uh, uh, many ways in, in many fields we corrected uh, in our our life. But uh, the unfortunate thing was, you know, even though uh, Solomon wrote all these uh, Psalms and uh, Proverbs, he could not correct his his own life the way he wrote and uh, he spoke. Because of that, you know, it's the end of his life. Uh, God so uh, became miserable. So I just want us that, you know, it is a teaching and preaching and writing is uh, easy. But if we don't uh, apply that in our life or we don't practice in that our life, you know, it is uh, it, it, it's a it's a possibility to what happened to Solomon's life in our life too. So, uh, in the book of Corinthians, uh, chapter nine twenty seven, we read that another apostle Paul says, "I crucify my flesh to practice what I preach." So let's learn lesson from others' mistake and uh, to correct our life. Uh, let's come back to uh, the words I I read in a come back to Proverbs. The key word of the Proverbs is uh, wisdom. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 9, 10 says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So what is the difference of uh, difference between knowledge and wisdom? Any children want to answer for that? I want to get, get your attention then, that's why I'm asking. What is the difference between the knowledge and the wisdom? What is knowledge? What is wisdom? Yeah. Okay, Nathan. Yeah. 
Yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That is Jonathan. What is I, I can hear it. Hmm. Okay, I, I didn't hear well. What, uh, what What did he say, John? Can you know? Can you translate? Yeah, somebody uh, just see what did he say? Oh, okay. Okay, I see another hand saw over here too. Can you hear that? Mia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why I swear that. Okay, Pratish, Pratish back there. I, I take one more hand. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pratish. Wisdom is right and wrong, okay. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, Danny, last, last. Okay. Okay, so, it's so all, all good. Yeah, that is how, based, uh, the, the knowledge is, you know, we can attain from, uh, from this world. It's a knowledge is a, you know in a, in every field you know that's a, we need to specialize and you know we we can we can uh, in, with our education you know we get that attain, we can attain the knowledge you know no one is a, okay say that you know, I'm a skilled person in, in one field you are skilled but you know in another field you don't know is a computer uh, programmer you know he do everything but you know if a, uh, if you lose a, a nail in your chair, you know maybe you know we cannot put that. You know we don't know how to do that. You know so uh, so every every field you know people are specializing and uh, learning and uh, uh, attaining the knowledge. That is the knowledge. But wisdom is is uh, is uh, different. That you know it is coming from heavenly, uh, but from coming from the Father of God, uh, Father of Heaven. Praise the Lord. Uh, so it is not. We cannot attain that, you know, from anywhere. It's fr from uh, from the world. Uh, we cannot. Uh, it won't get by birth. So it won't get by birth, or we cannot attain from that. But we have to ask to God, who is the omniscient God. We give. If you ask the God, you know, He will give you the wisdom. He will explain that, you know, it's coming up. So we'll understand more. The book of James, uh, chapter one, five says, if you, uh, it says, you know, if you lack wisdom you should ask God who give generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you if you if you ask God that God is giving you that wisdom uh, if you are if you are cry out if you ask God you are cry out you know you will receive that no matter how educated you are how illiterate you are how smart you are or how weak you are you know if you ask God you know, he will give that uh, uh, wisdom, wisdom from heaven. Uh, if you are using that wisdom to build our family life, our spiritual life, and our uh, personal life, we will never fail. We will succeed in our life. Uh, let's look what are the seven pillars of wisdom. We are going to speak about the wisdom uh, that is coming from above or coming from God. Uh, in the we, we read that in the chapter uh, nine verse one, uh, we read that what was that? Uh, wisdom has built her house; she has set up its seven pillars. Here Solomon compared this wisdom with a woman who is fearfully and wisely building a house with these pillars. Um, even though Solomon said there are seven pillars of uh, 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 there, there are seven pillars of this wisdom, but it is not mentioned right away there. But the Holy Spirit revealed through Apostle James, after many, many years, we can see that uh, in the book of James, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Praise the Lord. Someone, can you read someone? Mm. 
Okay, can you can you see um, Samuel? Can you read that? You can look over here. It's on the screen. Okay, thank you. So you can see that you know the seven pillars over here. First one is pure or holy, peace gentleness or meekness, obedience or willing to yield, mercy and good fruit, impartiality without hypocrisy. These are the seven pillars of wisdom that we can uh, uh, check, we can uh, think about that uh, one by one. The first uh, pillar of wisdom is the holiness. Our spiritual life should be built on holiness and to be in order. It is an honor for a spiritual person to be holy. So we know that uh, we are called in a Pentecostal people. Uh, the, the, the sign of the Pentecostal people are ho holiness. You know, the, the Pentecostal are the Mohamudra and the Varanadane Vishuddhiyana, Vishuddhiyarikana. So we know that, you know, our forefathers, fathers, you know, they paid a lot of price to keep that uh, holiness. And, you know, they stood for the holiness. And they live a life uh, like that in a no, no holiness. So let's examine ourselves this morning how, how holy we are in front of our, uh, our holy God. Uh, so uh, the, the Bible says wisdom have two eyes, two pair of eyes. That's one inner eyes and the outer eyes. So in the inner eyes, uh, inner eyes is to see ourselves. The outer eyes we see that, but we are very smart to see, use that outer eyes that you know how, uh, what, what's wrong with the other people and uh, how weak they are or what is their fault. So that, that's what we are using our outer eyes, but you know, if you use your inner eyes to examine yourself, you can lead a holy life. So the Bible says, who has the sacred heart, they will be, they will, they will see God. Without holiness, no one will see God. It is the will of God that is your sanctification. Uh, so let's let us uh, let us be a holy person. Let us lead a holy holy life. Uh, so the second uh, pillar of wisdom is peace. Do you have a peace in your heart? So we can see that you know the people are you know uh, searching for peace and uh, chasing for pieces peace. They they uh, they go for uh, some people do you know that you know now these days you know yoga is very famous you know people are doing yoga they find they're saying that you know they find peace in there and uh, some people are going visiting you know uh, holy places and you know they think you know they will get you know some people are chasing money and fame or whatever you, are, you you're doing you don't get that peace in your heart the Bible says that you know uh, yeah, um, you will not you will not give the, the world will not give you peace, but I will give you the everlasting peace. It is not like the earthly peace. Uh, uh, so, the, if you chase all all these things, you know you don't get the peace in your heart. But if you want, you know, get that uh, really peace into uh, in your heart, you need to ask God, you know, to find that heavenly peace uh, to uh, to um, in in our life. Then only we get uh, uh, peace in our heart. So. Uh, when we get that peace, you know, we will be peaceful, you know, so if you are, uh, think about that, you know, are, are you a peacemaker or a, uh, you are, uh, your life is, or uh, you take away some other uh, uh, peace. With our words or some, uh, with our actions, you know, many times, you know, uh, we, we uh, you know, the people lost, you know, their peace in their heart, you know, with our, our words or uh, our actions or deeds, but, you know, Bible says that uh, uh, the blessed are those, uh, blessed are those make peace, will be called the children of God. So are you the children of God? If you are, if you are uh, making peace, you are children of God. Praise the Lord. So if it is possible, be peace with uh, everyone. Let us be a peacemakers. I'm speaking the practical life, you know, uh, what, you know, related to this. Uh, the, this message, you know, how we need to do that, you know, this practical side I'm, I'm talking. 
so the third pillar is uh, gentleness. Gentleness is a character of children, uh, character of children of God. Some people misunderstood that uh, uh, the meekness uh, means that you know quiet all time, but it is not. Whenever you need to speak, you need to speak. Whenever you need to act, when you should act, act. But it it should not it should not be with the arrogance or pride, but do with the humility. Uh, uh, in Peter, the book of Peter, chapter five, verse five, we we read, "God hates the proud and the arrogant, but He gives the grace to the humble." We can see that you know as an example that you know Jesus was meek. Uh, many times you know in front of people who mocked him or despised him and uh, tortured him he was meek in front of them but at the same time he was a roaring lion to to the to, uh, his words came like a bullets to the pharisees and the scribes who who were stand against the word of god so be gentle be humble treat others greater than ourselves do not look out, their out, outward performance uh, appearances but look inside same like Jesus look at us and uh, and the four, fourth pillar of wisdom is obedience has anyone uh, obedience has uh, another meaning that uh, willing to yield we know that you know disobedience was the cause of man's fall when you check the root cause of all the problems are disobedience or willing to yield others or willing not willing to sub submissive when you look the families are breaking up the relations are relationships are breaking up the churches churches are dividing all this all things you know when you look you know the root cause is you know willing not willing to submissive or not willing to uh, uh, not willing to yield for others so yeah i i, I urge you to uh, to to uh, to obedient uh, and willing to yield to others the people who receive the wisdom of god they will yield to others they respect each other the bible says the one who obey the statutes of the god is receiving the holy spirit yield the word of god then you will not do the desire of the flesh children obey your parents in the lord for this is right obedience is better than sacrifice and heed is better than the fat of rams so let us be obedient to the word of god and the holy spirit i know the time is going up i'm i'm, I'm going a little faster praise the lord so uh, fifth pillar of the wisdom is mercy and good fruit fruit people who are used uh, people who are wise has full of mercy and they will fruitful the sign of wise people are they they would be merciful to others when someone come and uh, tell you their problems or troubles their hard time do not neglect it sometimes you know we say that oh it is not my problem what do i do for that you know um, you know i don't i don't know i don't have to worry about that not like that you know listen that problem think about that it, it is my problem so you can if you can do something do it to help them uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, pray pray for them well usually we we took the last one last one you know okay i will pray for you know prarthanayil vahicholam ennu parnja nammal vahikkarunde aalkare appo adu pole ena prarthika mathramalla you know when we can do something uh, we can do that too take it to that the burden of the other people that is our our burden too so uh, so do that way and uh, and uh, and the sixth pillar is impartial how do we know we are impartial sometimes you know we we are so attached with some people some families uh, we always call them and talk to them uh, visit them at the same time we ignore or we we, not, we do not care Uh, some other people a spiritual person not supposed to be pa uh, partial they should uh, treat everyone equal and keep the love 
and the relationship equally because we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ we we are partakers of same blood and the same one bread so we are we are the parts of one body so we are worshiping the same god in the same spirit and we are going to the same place so we cannot show that uh, partiality to anyone uh, treat them equally and love them equally jesus did jesus do any partial to us no he didn't do any partial to us none of us born in a jewish family we we are not did any anything special to be, cho- be to be chosen but god chose us from the from every nation and every tongue and every every creed and every every caste god is impartial god our god is impartial god we have to build up our spirituality without any partiality uh, the seventh uh, pillar of the wisdom is without hypocrisy our our life should be without hypocrisy spiritual hypocrisy means we act like or Im- imitate we are spiritual we have all forms of godliness but uh, there is no power spirituality is not for uh, acting god is god is not pleased with the uh, hypocrites in fact he hate them during his ministry uh, jesus pointed his fingers many times to uh, the hypocrites pharisees and scribes scolded them and shouted them because their outside was holy but the inside was full of sinfulness so let us have a life without a hypocrisy let me conclude uh, my thoughts over here solomon said wisdom has seven pillars and the apostle james really re- revealed that uh, uh, revealed that the seven pillars so actually what is this wisdom is let's read uh, uh, first corinthians 130 someone can read please first corinthians 130 yes but of him you are in christ jesus who became for us wisdom from god and righteousness and sanctification and redemption the heavenly wisdom is truly represents jesus christ jesus is the wisdom we can see the fullness of seven pillars in jesus christ we see that in the on the first pillar we see that in a it is pure and holy jesus is holy he is a holy of holy he was sinless and he was separated from the sinners and sin so he is a holy of holy and the second pillar we see that you know the peace the the book of ephesian chapter chapter 2 verse 14 says for he for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and uh, has broken down in the flesh the dividing wall of host- hostility jesus came to this world to reconcile us with the god for to do that he broke broke down his body and make peace with god so jesus is jesus is our peace and the third pillar we saw that you know that uh, that what we see in jesus that is his is meekness is a uh, gentleness he was quite in front of the people who were ridiculed him and tortured him and despised him in the book of esaya chapter 53 7 we read he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent on the fourth uh, pillar we see that in you know, the obedience ephesians chapter 2 6 though he was god he did not think of equality with god left all the glory and came down to the earth become a servant and obedient till the death of death to the cross jesus shown the complete obedience in his life he was obedient to his parents at the at the, at the age of uh, 30 when john the baptist came and you know he asked uh, john uh, uh, john asked jesus that uh, can, can you uh, baptize me but uh, 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 jesus replied i should not baptize you 
I, I should not baptize uh, the, the, to fulfill the righteousness of the God. You should baptize me. So he he showed that obedience in that to uh, uh, to to fulfill the uh, Father's will. And the fifth uh, uh, pillar we see that in the mercy, Jesus showed the mercy and compassion to everyone who came to him. When he see that you know the crowd was following him, uh, you know when they become hungry. And he fed them. He, he showed the compassion to them. The many sick people came to Jesus. And he healed them. Jesus compassionate to Mary and Martha. And he wept with them. He showed that compa uh, compa compassion to them. And raised Lazarus. Even Jesus was on the cross. While he was going through the pain of death. He showed the mercy to the thief on that cross. So he was a. Our God is a. Our God Jesus is full of mercy and compassion and the sixth pillar we see that impartial it doesn't matter a sinner or tax collector whoever came to Jesus he 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 healed them and uh, he, uh, uh, he 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 uh, he forgave their sins and saved them and you know uh, he spent with them so he didn't show any partiality with them Jesus he uh, Jesus came to this world for everyone and died for everyone. Without hypocrisy, we see that on that pillar, Jesus lived a life without hypocrisy. Jesus' life was true. He never act or imitated his life. He lived a life what he preached. He was righteous inside and outside in front of the Father of God. The world testified about him. He was a true God. The king Pilate said, he has not seen anything wrong in Jesus. Iscariot Judah, who betrayed Jesus, finally he said, I, I, I betrayed the innocent blood. The thief on the cross testified that he never done, Jesus ne never done any wrongdoing. Our Jesus lived a life without any hypocr hypocrisy. Praise the Lord. So, so we can see that uh, the, the, the fullness of seven pillars in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the wisdom. Let's build our life with, uh, with these pillars, with these seven pillars of the wisdom of Jesus. Is any of this pillar in your life is shaken or it is not grown up to the maturity of Christ Jesus' wisdom? Build it up with the fear of God. Proverbs 9.10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Know Jesus better every day. The, the more and more you know Jesus, you may be wiser and wiser. May God bless this words.